good afternoon i welcome you all of you to our fifth webinar by the itat chandigarh bar association our speaker today is advocate sri sunil kumar mukhi practicing at chandigarh since 1978 he completed llb in 1978 he started legal practice at bombay high court and later on shifted to chandigarh at chandigarh Sri Mukhi joined Mr. Jain Associate, a leading CA firm, and worked with the esteemed firm for about 21 years. In 2001, Mr. Mukhi established his office, Mr. Mukhi and Associate, consisting of his team comprising of lawyers, CAs, CS. Mr. Mukhi has appeared before tribunals, high courts, and Supreme Court of India. He is presently working at Chandigarh, Ludhiana, Shimla, Delhi, and Mumbai. I request now Sri Mukhi ji to start his deliberation. Sri Mukhi ji. Thank you, Mr. Goel. I am highly indebted to our Income Tax Appellate Tribunal, Bar Chandigarh, for giving me this opportunity to speak on a very important and basic topic dealing with the etiquettes and ethical codes for a professional. and wherein i'll be highlighting the basic essentials and requirements of a good advocate and also i like to give few tips of honest and successful advocacy though advocacy is not only in our profession advocacy is at all junctures in all parts of life whether we are dealing with our wife our daughter our parents in social media everywhere the correct advocacy or efficient advocacy is going to help you succeed in your life now first of all our tribunal being last fact finding body of the income tax act its proceedings and not only that it is studied by experts in income tax and the true interpreters of income tax act and its cumbersome provisions because we are they are the founders of correct income tax provisions and its interpretation due to the fact that though our honorable high courts and supreme court of india they are not well equipped with many tax specialist judges most of the time your income tax matter when it goes from high court or from tribunal to high court it goes to a non tax bench wherein we find great difficulties so tribunal is the basic is the main platform which gives the correct interpretation of income tax provisions also we the practitioners at chandigarh benches of itat are highly privileged to have best of the members and presently our honorable vice president mr n k saini one of the finest and experienced member a renowned chartered accountant and a side by side a law graduate with his teams at chandigarh amritsar jaipur and jodhpur benches is giving great disposal of cases with most judicious judgments being quoted all over the country by its coordinate benches and not only that by our honorable high courts and various other high courts and by the honorable supreme court by upholding and confirming those judgments whether they are in favor of the assessee or they are in favor of the revenue we on behalf of our bar and various big business houses of the region appreciate their judicious and fair decisions and also patient hearing and due respect for the bar members and helpful to the young practitioners we are grateful also to our present president of the itat mr bhat 
who is an eminent jurist and under whose guidance this institution is progressing not in the field of taxation but in other social sphere wherein he has along with vice presidents that is mr n k saini ji madam sushma chawla ji mr g s pannu ji and others have organized a mega event to mark the 79th foundation day ceremony of the institution of income tax appellate tribunal with two day seminar at hotel ashoka recently attended by various dignitaries from all ministry from various ministries including various other high dignitaries and legal luminaries like that of judges of the honorable supreme court honorable high court and all the members of the tribunal across the country and not only that our worthy president is also taking the institution of our tribunal to various other social affairs wherein he has been instrumental in conducting two webinars by one sister shivani ji and another by swami ramdev ji as we all are aware of it so we all wish him and all his team and this institution of itit a grand success at all times to come we are also grateful to our past members of the itit chandigarh benches like that of big names mr fc rastogi mr bahel mr grover mr sk chandar mr dr singh mr karwa mr bali and mr bhuvnesh saini mr mahavir singh ji and all others who have at one or the other time visited chandigarh benches and gave fantastic judgments which we are quoting and getting benefited at various junctures we are also grateful to the kind guidance and blessings of our senior advocates and chartered accountants who are though no more physically with us but by their deeds and their judgments they are still alive and will remain alive and followed by generations to come some of them being late shri mohan lal ji dk gupta ji mr s s rikhi ji mr p c jain ji mr b s gupta and mr mithun lal garg ji to whom we pay our heartiest condolences also also we are indebted to our senior members of the bar and the executive committee for efficiently conducting and contributing to the proper functioning of the itat chandigarh benches and its allied benches in establishing and maintaining very cordial relation amongst the tribunal members and the members of the bar with special thanks to mr subhash agarwal ji mr b m khanna ji mr t n singla our president sudhir sagar ji ashwini kumar ji tej mohan singh ji prikshit agarwal and top of all mr ashok goel ca who is all the time present for any and every job to be done for and on behalf of bar or by the members whenever he is called for and to our young budding lawyers and chartered accountants like that of mr pankaj jain saurav sagal mr aditya ashwini kumar ji mr ajay jain and nikhil goel and we wish them to maintain the dignity of the institution and their seniors and pray that they should progress not only in india but also contribute their special legal knowledge at the international level like that of big legal luminaries like fali s nariman nani palki wala ari salve mr dastu mr bora and all the other others in the field so we wish them also a great success and we offer them of our, our experiences and services at any and every time now to start with the present webinar i would like to say that though everyone knows how to become a good professional but at times one needs some further tips and guidelines and past experiences and to me as an individual everyone is good rather the best like an anmol ratan of this society but one needs to work more efficiently to exploit best out of one self and it rather require a tap a puja and for young lawyers 
a very common saying that Rome was not built in a day. So have patience, honest and hardworking, and result will be eminent. A quote from William Shakespeare's advice, because as we know, we advocates at times create problems. So in a satire mood, William Shakespeare has said, and he has given advice, the first thing we do, let's kill all the liars. But then he realized that without liars, the society cannot progress. He said, we better be clear about whom or what will replace them. There's no answer. So since the ordinary people look upon lawyers, the advocates, as trained personalities to use the freedom granted by the constitution and to defend others in enjoying the same. And in times of grave crisis, that is of constitutional crisis or national crisis, we all look at lawyers to see how they react and help them to bail out of such crisis as they have so done in past and will continue to do so in future. So thus, unless we have found a better replacement to the lawyers, we cannot and should not follow the advice of great William Shakespeare, who himself realized it and have said these words, though in a different context. Also, another personal advice for all, as given by my father, late Shri Hari Krishna Mukherjee, do it now to explain it because unless you follow this principle, either you will forget that important task or you will never do it. And even if you will do it at later stage, it may not be of that great help, which it would have been had you done in time following the simple principle of do it now. So my advice as per the hierarchy, what I got it from my father, and I succeeded to some extent by following this habit because as and when some colleague of mine calls, so Mr. Mukhi, I am stuck up with this, 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 and uh, if you can help me in getting the judgment, I stop all my activities unless I'm in a court and I try to get that judgment and help him because I know if he wants, he must be stuck up in the court so I advise you, always help your associates and colleagues. It is not going to take anything out of you. If you think, I'll, if I'll give this judgment, people will not come to you. No. Your destiny is here. Whosoever will help. If you help somebody with one rupee, I assure you, you will be benefited by 10 rupees at least. Though the God says, Ek rupiah doge to so rupiah do. Now, the quest for unending desire to earn wealth and luxury in a short span has resulting in deteriorating morality in pursuing this noble profession. It's a very noble profession. It's a very easy, very nice, enjoyable profession. We need to understand the importance of carrying out legal profession with moral principles. There are many poor and uneducated persons who require dire legal help, which is a great opportunity in the hands of aspiring advocates to grab and make all efforts for their rescue. The said opportunity should not only be considered as a learning tool, but should be carried out with an intention to help others. Helping others will help to bring work satisfaction, maintaining interest in work, and mental peace, which will help the beginners to cope up with the struggle associated with this, with this noble profession. Aray, I can tell you my experiences. Whenever you win a case and you come out, the clients, your colleagues, and the person present in the court, they run towards you and congratulate you. I can tell you nothing better than that the satisfaction you get with that sort of appreciation. Nothing, even if you get one crore rupees cash and on the other side, 
20 people, 30 people, your colleagues appreciating you. I think that is unrepressible. Creating interest in work is a very important element in any work or profession to achieve success. You must enjoy your profession, preparing a case, putting up before the judges, discussing with your associates, with your colleagues. One has to develop passion to give best advice to his client and should be worried for the legal consequences from failure to render the required legal services. You should be worried. You should be result 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 You should be, there should be a hype on a crisp on a result This profession requires daily reading of recent judgments throughout life. Daily reading is the most vital exercise to achieve success in this profession. This firm determination to read can only be inculcated if one has interest in his profession. The said interest can only be maintained if initially one can do the hard job of reading daily. This will enhance efficiency, which will ultimately motivate to read and learn new things, forming this as a part of routine. Now, Coming back to the main tips, I have developed these are 53 points, which I'll send you also. We'll put it on the net also by Shogolji and team. The main tips for a good advocate and efficient advocacy, I'll just go through them. Number one, let your opinions be honest and responsible. Never begin your arguments unless. You are satisfied with the same and have evidence to substantiate it. The essence of good advocacy is three things. To know the correct facts. If you know the correct facts, 50% of case you have won. To know the correct law on the issue in dispute. Statute, if you know, 25% you have won. To apply the correct judgment to those facts and legal proposition, finally, and for that, before referring to a case, I have taken a beautiful tip from my senior, late Mr. P.C. Jain, the child accountant. He said, Mr. Mukhi, don't refer to a judgment other, unless you have read it as a whole. Don't go by the head notes. Head notes are misleading, misguiding. Even yesterday, we had little discussion on the point that whether Manjinder's case, Manjinder Singh's case is direct on the issue or not. So you must read the judgment in toto in full. You will develop a beautiful habit and in that judgment you will get so many new points for your case. Next, as regards reference to legal judgment, unless you have a direct judgment of your High Court or of the Honorable Supreme Court of India in your favor, never start with that. Always start then with the judgment which is against you. Otherwise, you will have a tough time if the Honorable Judge or the opposite counsel have a direct judgment against you. And if he intervenes and refers to that, the judge will go against you. Even if your direct judgment may be more stronger than the against you. So always refer to the judgment against you so that the mind of the judge will be there that he is not a fraud. He will start believing you. Never respond instantly to cracks or insults that may be heard during hearing either by the honorable judge or by your opposite counsel. Have patience. Do not retaliate. It could contribute to losing your case. If the honorable judge gets irritated, you may lose your case. Keep it to your chest. Afterwards, you can clarify on that issue. When you argue, be clear and precise, not confused. Your mental output must flow with cogent and logical arguments. Then respond to the questions promptly by the honorable bench, even if it puts you off track. Give your answer first 
to the courts or judges questions or remarks and present your own points afterwards this is an excellent piece of advice for success in court otherwise judge will say okay mr mukhi keep on saying if you are not answer to his question promptly keep yourself informed and be up to date with all the reported and if possible unreported judgments of the same authority honorable high court or supreme court never cite an overruled judgment that may be direct on the point it is always better to understand a case than to overstate a case it is better to understate a case than to overstate a case because it is the natural urge of a judge to cut down to cut you down to size and to prove that your case is not as clear as direct as you profess it is to come to the correct facts and a just decision so be precise and never overstate never respond anxiously in a retaliatory mood even to the scrupulously uncalled for remarks against you heard by the honorable judge or by the other as i have already said keep it to your chest and can respond at the end of the case and that too in a very nice decent manner never say your lordship will bear with me because normally we say once you are in a process of arguing the judge is keep on posing this is a question and he wants to stop then you say your lordship please bear with me for a moment because a good judge or an abrupt reply may come from the judge that what do you think we are doing up to now they are always listening to you so never say please bear with me for some time no never exaggerate and don't be too smart or a, and avoid being funny leave your anger outside the court room don't go on with your opponents since the major part of your professional life has to be spent with colleagues outside the court the same we all are like sahib sahab we all are sent together so never fight on them one even in your court if he is against you be humble and try to explain your point and forget that whatever you have done there always address the court correctly that is each judge or member must be addressed as per his designation because judges are human and some of them are more sensitive because some of them think that their dignity is more important than getting on with the job of deciding cases on they say they have come leaving the profession with some dignity so they should be addressed with due respect and as per their designation don't criticize any judge before whom you have appeared either in the corridors of the court or in the bar library or before clients better you ask yourself in a calm or collective mood and whether the judge was right or not or whether he was wrong discuss with yourself if at all you want to say something and clarify about the conduct of a judge do so in the court of law otherwise remain silent because a different message go may go to him and also he will not get any opportunity to clarify patience and gravity of hearing is an essential part of a good lawyer because a much speaking lawyer is a worse patience and gravity of hearing learn to lose with dignity because please remember it is the law of fact that only one party is going to win so learn to lose with dignity never jump on a conclusion about the judge because while hearing he may give his mind he may speak his mind while you are still arguing a case because sometimes it is instant reaction of the judge so don't assume that judge is against you without having fully heard you as often judges pose this question patently against your contentions only because on the basis only because on the basis of mutual good faith between the bench and the bar the legal system exists and 
the judge will come to a correct decision. If you immediately start criticizing your your OC, we are already given a, a judgment. That is not true because the judge judgment comes much afterwards. It can be changed even by the last small argument of yours. Never give interviews or talk to the media regarding cases you have argued because it smacks of cheap publicity. And it is unfair to the judge also because that judge is not present to clarify his point. Never claim about the inadequacy of the time because sometimes judges say, Mr. Mukhi, please finish it in five minutes. Never say, no, no, sir, it is not possible to do that because that will expose your own incompetence of not being precise and to the point. Always say, yes, you are, I'll try. The skill of a practicing liar in this modern age is not flamboyance or verbosity. Rather, it is humble, simple, and respectful, like our Mr. Sudhir Sagalji. It is a general illusion to think that cases are won or lost because of their inherent strengths or weaknesses or face value. It is not universally true. Advocacy plays a vital role. How to present your case, when and where to tell a particular fact, particular statute, particular judgment. So advocacy plays a great role. Always keep your cool because you lose, you lose your temper at a judge is losing half the battle in the court at that very time. Good sight and good hearing are the basic essentials of a lawyer in active practice. Always appreciate and acknowledge the hard work of your associates, your juniors, and say so boldly before the judge, before the court, and before your colleagues. Because they are a great helping hand to you. Without them, in this modern world, a single man can never survive. So much of competition, so much of material is there. It is better to spend more time thinking about your case than merely reading your brief. Think about your case. Draw different ideas, examples, contentions, environments you want to make. Simply reading, keep on reading and reading will not come, bring you to the good judgments and good uh, arguments. Three common principles as to how a lawyer must prepare for and argue an important case is to refer to logical, coherent, and complete one's argument as planned. Because sometimes we plan 10 points, but you get confused there because of the many different questions from the judges, and you may think it is not like that, but I have planned. No. Whatever you plan, stick to your plan. Unless you have been shattered on one or the two points, leave that. But otherwise, must argue all the points you have planned. Otherwise, you lose it. To remember and present those arguments you did not make during earlier hearings. That's another important thing. Even if you have forgot something in last hearing, put that in. Lastly, to forget and avoid the utterly and devastating arguments that one thought while preparing his case. Whatever sorry or you thought in a fit of anger, no, 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 I'll do that. Forget that. Great art of advocacy is to make your case, or for that matter, every argument simple, what is complicated and not vice versa. Never ever be overconfident in any respect. Always reward your juniors and associates more than they deserve if you can really afford. The lawyer should not demean our profession by resorting to strike of work or paralyzing working of courts or tribunals because we are the protector of the law. We should develop three basic qualities of, in ourselves as a good lawyer. That is moral foundation and responsibility, ethical principles, and also to some extent social and sentimental behavior and qualities. Because in the long run, the manner in which judges and lawyers discharge their 
duties can build public opinion and public opinion is a better safeguard for the individual of the society than any law or constitutional guarantees you may be winning a different country unless the public opinion is in your favor that he is a good lawyer he presents his case well he listens to the clients and he does everything properly that is what is ultimately going to count and make you a polished lawyer the most important thing in professional life rather than day to day life is not conquering but fighting well best attitude is that i will win not immediately but definitely must share your knowledge and experiences and latest cases with all your colleagues and associates always help your fellow professional instantly for the help they seek from you on professional counts no isha bias or jealousy leave this be respectful during your arguments and especially while listening to opposite counsel's arguments keep note of main arguments by your opposite counsel while you have to meet them too keep a small note when the opposite counsel is arguing because you have to give a rejoinder be cool calm and composed and conclude your arguments with gratitude always be punctual in court by reaching earlier than the starting of the court always bow before and at the end of your arguments and conclude of your case and do so while entering and leaving the court by referring to the honorable bench in legal writings be precise and simple with great and heavy heart i request not to enter in malpractices of entering into an unethical compromise with the opposing counsel though it is not present in our cases but in uh, legal other criminal and civil cases which is in disregard to the interest of your client have a command on the language app phrases apply them at appropriate places and at the top be a good human being also always be well dressed as i told you earlier also so now to conclude that in this covid 19 timing stay home stay safe and keep social distancing but keep intact with your profession don't get lazy rather do your routines better and more vigorously than you are doing because now you get more time for your personal exercise in the community now try to develop the culture of work from home also in our offices we should try to do that because it will save much of the national wealth time money and energy of our associates our workers also develop a permanent quality and gesture that is donate generously and at the end i pray for any unwanted remark or saying or being harsh to anyone and not to the mark to anyone's expectations because these are my personal experiences and quotes of various books notification and other senior professionals experiences and advices then i have now developed few points which are not professionals non professionals as a human being taking into account that we have 24 hours in a day my calculation of the basic needs is about 14 hours with the 8 hours sleep 6 hours we need i I'll, i'll i'll post it and i'll request mr nikhil ji and ashok ji to send it to all the members where in i have said how much time we take in tooth brushing exercising sun basking whatever and with that we are still left with 10 hours so we must utilize our time to the best of ability because this time will never come back and on top of all 
always think big, then act big, and certainly you will become big. Plan well, live well, and rise to the best in your life. Then I want to touch a small point about, again, this COVID-19 variant about, because that goes to our organization also. I'm very surprised to see crores of dollars, pounds, and rupees being donated by various organizations, heads, by various institutions. But I have not till date seen, if, if I'm wrong, please correct me, correct me. I have not seen any of the workers or employees coming forward to help the employers, to help the institutions, wherein they have been working for the last 50 years, 30 years, 20 years. Why not these employees should also come forward and say, at least we also donate one day's salary. Though our leaders, some of them have contributed one month salary. It may be a peanut for them, but still they have done a goodwill gesture. But our workers, our employees are cribbing all the time. Why so? They don't have an, any moral responsibility about their institution, about their bread givers, about the nation, about the country, and about the world in this universe. They are only sitting there to take and crib. Where are the unions? Where are the union leaders who always fight for and they make a big haul of that? Where are they? Why don't they come forward? Yes, we also contribute from all our union members. Five rupees, ten rupees. If a person, if an employee of ours is working with me, I suppose if my employee, I take my case, I have 20 employees, if they are working for me for the last 20 years, and one who is getting 50,000 rupees or 25,000 today, 10,000, in, in past 20 years, he might have got one crore rupees. So at least he has also some savings. So like that, these workers, where are they? So I have written few points about do's and don'ts about the employees and also from the employer side. They should also come. Now, at the end, I have written a good advocate is he who creates a best advocate in himself and rather lays down examples for others and at the same time lays down top principles of good advocacy. Advocacy, let's say, means the intelligent means and ways of putting up your case. In profession, as I said, at all junctures, in all spheres of life. So, at the end, I say, stay healthy. Enjoy each moment of your life, and especially of our profession. As it's a wonderful profession, a wonderful, enjoyable way and means of life. Surely, certainly, we will certainly defeat this Corona-19 pandemic very, very soon and we'll be together again arguing, mixing, having fun and party time. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. God bless everyone. Sir. Great, sir. Thank you so much for your uh, inspiring words today. And definitely Please. this uh, does serve as a very good uh, benchmark for all members practicing as well um, in, in terms of uh, managing expectations and creating that balance between the profession and personal life as well. Um, at this point, I would request uh, participants in the audience if they could raise their hands if they would like to uh, add something uh, as part of the deliberations uh, that we have gone towards. Um, in the meanwhile, since we also have our uh, previous speaker seminars, uh, C. Ashwini Kumarji, uh, Advocate Sudhir Segalji, I would request uh, the members as well. Uh, we are allowing participants to unmute themselves. So if uh, they could add a few words as well here uh, in support. Uh, 
I mean, uh, if they could add some deliberations to today's uh, seminar, sir, we would like your comments as well. Welcome, Ashwini ji. Hello. Sir. Haan ji. Haan ji, ji. Mukhi sir, uh, to, I think you have uh, thrown a lot of light on uh, various issues which uh, an advocate should possess. In fact, I think we are all very grateful to you for uh, showing this guide, for tell, giving this guidance. So we have all acquired from firstly your father, Mohan Lalji. He was a great <laughs> judicial luminary. We are proud of him. And also from you. Thank you. We have Thank seen you, you sir. arguing and we have picked up many good things from you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Aji Mukhi ji, it was, I think, rare thing to basically hear you and the topic was so you know, difficult. I was thinking that what you are going to say, but you took a very well time. And I think the two, three things which are very important for a lawyer, which you have already said. Please. One is the patience. I right. just, uh, you know, recall the... Uh, my very, you know, old year, 1972, that really? was my, I think, fourth or fifth visit to the IT, you know, department. Really? I had gone to just to show one, uh, that Chalan to the ITO concern. Really? I had sent my, you know, slip. And then at that time, I was just, you know, standing outside in the heat. Uh, I think it was the uh, July, 72. And all the seniors were going and coming out. I had been waiting there for about three hours. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, suddenly the, uh, uh, suddenly the boss came into the corridor. He said, why you are here, young man? I said, I have sent a slip to the officer concerned. When did you send? He said, I sent it at 11 He just, you know, took me to the room and just said, that he is a young and a budding lawyer and uh, he had sent a slip. Can the sir, yes. Then he said, why didn't you call him? Yes, sir, I was uh, busy. Now, during that time, I had just, you know, can I have passed out. I was saying that he was talking to me. He was going so But I think that patience word was then then that, you know, senior man took me to his room. He said the same thing. He mm. said, Mr. Segal, you should not have told this thing in front of uh, that you know, officer concern. Tomorrow you have to appear before him. And that thing is the most important thing about the patience and the passion. Passion yeah. to work, which you have already said. And it was nice hearing you, sir. And it was a wonderful thing that you have made out a case. And I think our young and budding lawyers, not only those, but we also have learned a lot. Thank you so much, Mr. Mukhi. All the best. Thank you. Thank you, Sarva. Thank you. Anji, Singla Saab, Nidhi Kare. Our worthy president. Sir, I am not in front of Singla Saab. Ki shakal wo piche se chupai hoi hai. Kya baal, sir? Hello. Haan, ab aai, ab aai, ab aai, ab aai. Sir, aap to humare chief hai. Aapke bina to sab adhura hai. ओ सर मैं तो आपको देख रहा था आपको सुन रहा था मेरी शक्ल दिखाने की तो जरूरत ही नहीं थी मैं मैं इतना स्मार्ट तो नहीं हूं यार आपसे बड़े बड़े जब बड़े भाई जब बड़े भाई स्क्रीन पे हो तो हमारी तो फिर आप तो पीछे ही रहेंगे ना जी नहीं नहीं बड़े तो आज आज के दिन आप प्रेसिडेंट to hear you, बहुत ही अच्छा लगा. And uh, as Mr. Sagal has rightly said that we were thinking के आप क्या बोलोगे, कैसे समझाओगे, but the way in the short period आपने सारी बात करक्स बता दी है profession की, and it's very good. And not only for the younger or the new ones, ये हमारे लिए भी seniors के लिए it is eye opener के how to behave, what are the ethics, how to do it. So it's very good. And this is very useful for everyone. And in the coming time, mein bhi shuru se ye, these things are part of the court proceedings. And our profession is also part of it. So it's very good. Thank you very much for this. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 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 Th
Thank you. Thank you, President Saab. Thank you. God bless you. At this point, I'd like to invite uh, Shri Tej Mohanji for the vote of thanks as well. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. I, on behalf of ITT Bar Association, Chandigarh, wholeheartedly thank Shri S.K. Mukherjee for enlightening us on the art of honest and successful advocacy in all aspects of life. He has rightly said that Rome was not built in a day. It takes time to inculcate the traits of a good professional and one should patiently and honestly tread the righteous path. He has listed out 53 odd points which we should imbibe and follow throughout our professional life. Sir, you were totally up to the mark giving us tips in respect of professional and even personal lives of ours. At this juncture, I also thank all the participants who could join us in this continuing series of webinars. It will be a continuous endeavor to arrange such e-webinars as already stated in the earlier meetings. I would again reiterate the golden rule, stay home, stay safe, stay healthy and exercise regularly and defeat COVID-19. Thank you very much, Mukhi, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'm in